Welcome everyone. It is Ask Me Anything again. It's your host, Selena. Um, yes, I am going to be talking to you today about seven um, marketing funnels to help your business sing. And before I start, I just want to let you know that you know what we're talking about here. It's not just to do with tea business. In fact, any business needs to do marketing. And if you have not been doing it, thinking, oh, you know, I'll do that later. Look, working on marketing is essentially making more people, helping more people to realize that your existence. Sales is about converting the people who already know you to buying something from you. But before that, so certainly people need to be aware of you. And most people were not aware of you just because you have a website or just because you have a shop. You know, just imagine, you know, if you open a shop in a busy shopping mall, you know, how many people are going to know you're there if you don't tell them, if there are no notice board or, you know, signage or anything that telling people you are there. It, it will be just absolutely by chance that they stumble across you if they happen to come up to the seventh floor and find you there, you know, or something like that. So it is really important that you do put a good deal of your effort in marketing. Now, of course, when it comes to marketing, it does feel like, you know, sort of like a never ending tunnel or, you know, uh, where's my return of investment and things like that. I definitely agree that, you know, it, it, it's a place where you can really burn quite a lot of money without any gain. So it is really important that you do test and measure and then, you know, reiterate and, and you know, tweak it so that you make sure that you are really looking at the results. And what I also find really funny about marketing it reminds me of when my dad was very sick. Um, he was really sick. He had diabetes at that point. And, um, you know, he, he went to different specialists. So when he goes to a blood specialist, the blood specialist would say, Mr. Chan, there is something, you know, wrong with your blood. He goes to uh, a brain specialist. The brain specialist would say, yes, there's something going on there. And, it's so similar to marketing. I realized that only just the other week. I went and talked to an SEO guy. SEO guy said that SEO is the way to, you know, to make your marketing work. I go to uh, someone who loves email marketing and they say email marketing is the king. And what I'm trying to say here is that, in fact, there are many, many different ways that they can work for someone and may not work for someone else. And what happens is, especially this, this is quite pertinent with small businesses because we are essentially the doer of these things. So for example, for me, Facebook has not worked very well. And I really do think that it's partially because I'm just not into Facebook personally. So it becomes harder work for me to learn that skill versus for someone who's already loving Facebook, it'll be much easier for them to go and manage that page to understand what's going on in Facebook. So I do encourage you to, you know, um, review these strategies that, you know, those seven funnels that I'm going to tell you about and don't go crazy and do all of them at the same time, especially if you have not started any of these, just pick out one or two of them to start something that aligned with you, something that you think you can enjoy doing and get good at it. So forget about the bright, shiny object out there, you know, Instagram, Snapchat, everything else. You know, if those things don't align with the way you are, if you are the doer of these strategies. Now, marketing funnels, there are definitely many ways to do marketing. And here we're going to go in reverse order. So number one is the one that convert the best. When we say convert, it means that, you know, bring in the sales uh, in, you know, in the highest percentage. So let's get started. Number seven, referral marketing. 
Referral marketing means, you know, like word of mouth. You know, imagine the, the last time that, you know, your friend come to you and say, hey, you know, I just went to this restaurant. It was really awesome. Go and check it out. So that is referral marketing. Most businesses don't do this properly. And I must confess that, you know, we have the longest time have not been doing this properly either because it does take a lot of work, babysitting, if you will. So the important thing to actually get good at it is automated. And to automate it nowadays, especially if you're using any sort of online e-commerce software, typically there will be some tools that you can use out of the box or maybe with a small fee to run these um, these um, uh, emails for you. So you can set it up, let's say, you know, 10 or 50 days after your order's gone out, that an email will win, go out and say, hi, John, you know, you recently purchased blah, blah, blah. We just want to know, you know, how you felt about it. Can you please review our product? So there are different ways of doing it. You can throw in some incentive as well. And of course, you can also do, you know, uh, referrals, you know, like if you refer five friends, you get a discount voucher. All of those are referral marketing and certainly all of them are easily automated. So if you are needing some help there, just, you know, book in a coaching call with me and we can, you know, go through some of those um, tools and strategies. Number six is joint ventures. For anyone who come from the uh, corporate background, probably you might have heard that and you might think, oh, it's a really big deal. No, it doesn't have to be. It could simply be like, say, you, know, you and um, another business that have got a similar um, range of clients that you're targeting. So let's just say, um, you know, maybe a gym, a local gym, you know, you could give them some tea samples to put into their goodie bag for the people who are just signing up for membership. And, you know, in that way, you are you know, introducing your products to people who are most likely, who are health conscious, who are most likely going to drink your tea. Or maybe if you're a cafe and there is a beauty salon next door, you know, swap some brochures and whatnot. And on it, it says, you know, go next door for, you know, a, a cup of tea uh, for a discount price, you know, after, you, you know, your hairdo and whatnot. So you can certainly, you know, do those things quite easily in small scale to start, at least experiment. And don't forget to test and measure. Whatever gets measured gets improved. So if you give next door you know, business, a hundred of your voucher, how many of them are redeemed, you know, and try different offers as well. Maybe one is tea and cake. The other one might be, you know, 10% off something, or maybe, you know, they get an extra stamp on their loyalty card, whatever it might be, right? So test them out. Number five, content marketing. Content marketing is basically like writing blogs, generating, um, um, you know, reports, quick guides, and um, also, you know, like um, basically articles or information. It might be presented in um, YouTube or, you know, other video format. Essentially, it's still content generation. And of course, you know, you will need to give that out to someone who's interested. So how do you give it out? Typically, it'll be through emails, and that will lead to our number three email marketing just in the moment. Uh, but what you need to do is, is um, also, you know, helping others to be aware of these content. So reach out to, you know, maybe um, Facebook groups or other networks that you are already in contact with and help them to see the value of these content and see if they would be sharing it with um, those groups in the tribes. Number four, SEO, search engine optimization. Search engine optimization is a very geeky thing, it's, at least in the old days. You know, there is a lot of it is to do with mechanics. It still does. But as time moves on, especially with Google, you know, kind of um, ruling over this, you know, search world, it basically means that um, you need to be relevant. So if you are a tea supplier and you're trying to get coffee people and the whole page is peppered with the word coffee, but it has no relevance to the page, then the coffee people is going to come to your page and then they go, oh, there's nothing here for me. Click off. 
that will tell Google that that is not a relevant page to that search term coffee. And that in the long run, it's going to backfire on you. So it's really important that you do actually stay relevant and search results using search engine optimization are called organic search results. So on top of the Google, Google page where you type in your search words, let's just say green tea, right after it, there will be some search results. If it doesn't have a little thing that says ads, that means they are organic search results. Of course, if it does say ad, then, then it's actually uh, sponsored ads. So that's a different thing altogether. But if it is um, just a straight search result, then that is what people are looking for and those search results build credibility people usually click on those other than ads and um, the more people click on your page um, and read through and you know stay on your pay, uh, on your site to look at other things the uh, more relevant your page is according to Google to that particular search term Google do look at page by page not site by site so if there's a particular page that is really relevant to something um, you know of that you know in relation to that search term then you will get ranked really well you know meaning that you'll be at the top of the page if you are at you know 250th of the search result that essentially means that you're not you're not seen because no one will click page after page you know go next 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 you know until they find you no if you're not on the first page pretty much forget it Search engine optimization is like long line fishing. It takes a lot of work, patience, and consistent effort. I would recommend you to get someone else to do it, unless you're kind of geeky. Um, and you know, it, it is, a, in the long run, it will be really worthwhile, but it does take time. You know, we're talking about you know, at least a year before you probably will see real results in. So it is something that, you know, you can certainly start, but don't expect that to just give you that, you know, return of investment right away, you know, all of a sudden your, uh, you know, search traffic or, you know, your visibility just go, you know, go through the roof. It's not going to happen. All right. Still worthwhile doing that. Um, Number three, email and SMS marketing, particularly email. SMS, if you do do consultation, you provide services, coaching and things like that, probably more useful because they are very personal. Um, and email marketing, sure, a lot of people are asking, Selena, are we serious? I mean, who reads email these days? Well, this is a funny thing. A lot of people still do. And in fact, email is still a really good way to invest your time and money and I've done it again and again you know looking at all the other things that we have spent money and time on you know like Google AdWords and blog and you know so on email marketing is still really trumps it and a lot of our customers been around with us for the longest time you know as long as we've been around for about 15 years and they are still buying in fact a lot of them are buying more because you know of this relationship we have built this intimate relationship email marketing sending out emails to them does not give you the right to send them rubbish does not give you the right to be you know sales drama especially if that is not what you're about so i highly recommend you know to provide value in your emails and the really funny thing is also that while the content is really, really important, it's not the only thing that is important here. The other thing that is important is actually staying regularly in their, under their radar. So we have tested that out too, you know, like we send our newsletter and we notice, hang on, actually a lot of the sales that come through right after the email has nothing to do with the products that we were promoting or talking about. And we call these guys up and they say, oh, yeah, thanks for the email. You know, reminded me I need to top up. And then we ask them, you know, what do you think about the email? You know, newsletter, was, was there something in particular that was useful to you? And they kind of go, oh, I didn't have a chance to read it. So there you have it. Email newsletter is not just about the content, but it is that constant, you know, periodic, regular ringing the doorbell kind of thing that reminds them you are still around. So the other thing about email is, and this is actually one of the reasons why I really love email marketing is because you do 
actually have that email as part of your asset. That database of emails is gold. If tomorrow, for whatever reason, Facebook shuts you down, and it's happened to some people, you still got that email. You can actually have direct contact, you know, and that is so important nowadays. And again, I would, you know, highlight it, bold words, underline that you do not throw them rubbish. You know, when they send email, please, 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 you know, do something that is really useful to them. Um, and in order to be useful, you need to understand what they're about. And if you have a big list, it's really important to segment them based on, you know, their interests. And again, you know, something that I work with a lot of clients in my coaching, because this is the piece that is really going to move the needle for you. And you may say, well, I don't know, my writing might be a bit sucky. Hey, that was me 15 years ago. But if you write 15 years, every week, every month, you will get good at it. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Um, I got to a point that some people said to me that, Selena, you're pretty good at copywriting. You could be a copywriter. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. Um, so, you know, that's just it. Give yourself that chance. If you like writing, have that interest, just start small. And for the perfectionists out there, you don't need to be amazing. You don't need to write, you know, a giant saga. You know, we're not talking about that. In fact, nowadays, it's really important to actually learn how to write that actually hook people in. And it's not just about having an epic, epic newsletter or post. Uh, often it's not about that at all. Um, so really understand, you know, how to write and the psychology of the readers. It's going to really make a difference for you. And, um, you know, there are definitely a lot of materials and training out there that can help you to get good at it. And send out something imperfect is totally okay. Because particularly per perfectionists, I'm sure your imperfect piece is actually pretty darn good already. So send it out, stay regular with that, your communication channel. Don't put it off just because you cannot have it perfect. Um, you know, until someone see it, it, it it's not going to move the needle for your business. So that is important. Number two is Facebook ads. Yeah, a lot of people are having trouble with Facebook ad. And I must say, you know, that's part of what I have struggled as well. And certainly, Facebook ad can be really amazingly rewarding if you do it right. And this is a really interesting thing about Facebook ads. You can actually go into the tiniest, tiniest detail to segment people. You can say, I only want to advertise to people who are 30 to 40 year old women who are working, have got kids, uh, have got dogs or travel in the last six months. You can actually go down to those granular level to specify who you want to talk to or advertise to. So because of that, you can actually get really good return from that, uh, whether you're B2B or B2C but you need to know how to do that. And in order to know how to do that, you do need to experiment with a little bit of a budget. And of course, time and test and measure and tweak and so on. So if it is not your thing, I would say that just get a bit of a basics in your head and then go and speak to consultants who are able to help you out with that. There are people who are doing really well with that. Um, and Facebook is a moving goalpost. Um, all the time so it might be better that you actually get someone else to do it if you have got a bit of a budget um to 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 experiment the facebook ad budget is actually quite small but if you get a consultant to do it often that fee for consultant could be you know from you know thousands up so you do need to kind of shop around depending on your budget um and of course really get clear of the outcome that you're going for before you even put any money down. Um, and sometimes just doing a little bit of experiment, just run a few ads to see how it works, how it flows, could be the best lesson you could give yourself in understanding you know, Facebook ads. 
All right. So next one is, and it's already number one, presentation and meetups and things like that that is face-to-face. -face. I mean, like right now I'm doing this face-to-face -face with you, um, but you could be brushing your teeth while you're watching this or, you know, doing something else, checking emails, who knows? Um, but the fact is that, you know, there is a much more authentic connection here. You know, you can see who I am, you know, and um, I'm not, you know, dressing up or anything just for this gig, you know, so there is the authentic me here. Um, and meet up and face-to-face -face presentation is taking that, you know, one step further. And this is what I found really interesting as well. Like, for example, I've gone to some book launches if I just go to that bookstore, it's not likely I will buy that book. But because I have gone through the book launch, I kind of felt like, well, you know, I really um, are in tune with this topic and I like what this person has presented. And perhaps in a way, it's also the reciprocal thing. So this person put the effort to, you know, present the book and to answer questions and so on. So I go and buy that book. You know, it's extra special. And with tea, it's the same. You know, if you are, showing them the tea, whether it is, you know, the, the topic in the presentation or it's just part of, you know, like an activity, you will find that people are more likely to enjoy the tea, to give you feedback right there. You can see their face, how they react to it. And of course, um, also purchasing the product. So it is really key that you give yourself that chance to give your tea that chance to show up, you know, in your business uh, presentation and activities. Um, if you are primarily selling coffee, it doesn't mean that you cannot showcase your tea and, you know, help people to learn how to brew it, you know, as well as how they brew their coffee. It is really important that if you are helping people to understand, um, you know, the importance of tea, you give it your best shot because only then you're going to get the return that you are after. I certainly do not want you to go and try all of these strategies all in one go. I'm sure there might be one or two of them that you're already thinking, yeah, I can give it a go. Start there and start with little steps. If you feel overwhelmed, I'm here to support you. And also keep in mind often it's because we have this ginormous goal and we have not broken it down to something that we can do. Think about out of this whole outcome that you're trying to achieve, what is the one thing that you can do today? Maybe you say every Wednesday, I set an hour aside and I'm going to learn email marketing or I'm going to get coaching or, you know, I am going to, you know, work on the business, how to make the business more efficient. You know, I know at the moment coming closer to Christmas, a lot of you guys are very busy and you may say, whether it's Christmas or not, I'm just like, you know, having 10,000 balls to juggle. I totally get that. And because of that, it's even more important that you choose things that are going to really make a difference to your business and make them you know, your priority. Often when we say we don't have time to do something, it's because we're spreading ourselves too thin. You know, we're trying to, you know, tackle 10 things every day. Our to-do list is a mile long. That is why we keep running out of time. Well, if we can step back and say, okay, do I really have to do all of this? Can I palm some of them off? is changing the font color really going to make a difference to my you know, bottom line and things like that. And it's really important to find something that you really do enjoy doing in the business because you got into business, not because you're trying to enslave yourself, right? <laughs> so, you know, choose something that is really going to make a difference for you, for your business while you're having fun because only when you're having fun doing it, you're going to do it again and again, and you're going to excel in a speed that you never knew. If it is something that you're just dragging your feet doing it every day, maybe it sells, then you've got to go and say, okay, can I palm it off? Or can I find a way to make it fun for me to do again? You know, that is really important. And break the, the, the steps down so that you can just go for the easy chewable size you know that you can tick that box every day to give yourself that encouragement to aim for a little more next time and so on so let's recap the seven 
very useful, successful way of marketing your business to get ROI. Number seven, referral marketing. Number six, joint venture or marketing partnerships. I like to call it marketing partnerships. And number five, content marketing. Number four, SEO. Number three, email marketing, maybe a bit of SMS. And number two, Facebook ads. And number one, da -da -da, presentation meetup, basically offline face-to-face -face type of activities and experiences. And the T is going to make such a difference if you are doing other things in activity. The T is going to cement that memory, that 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 experience for uh, your clients, you know, um, and it's sometimes it could be just the make or break. It's really incredible. So have a go at trying some of these out. Let me know what you think of them. And of course, if you do want some help, you know where to find me. And just one last thing I want to give you as a little parting gift. I know Christmas is just around the corner. A lot of you guys are going to spend some time on once you know the business you know the christmas hassles and craziness is, is done and dusted you want to go and you know look at the business look at performance look at can i do better next year with less stress and because of that um, i want to offer you a very special gift now some of you might have checked out the t business um, fast start course it is a condensed version of what I have learned and achieved in the last 15 years running tease.com.au into six modules. So it is pretty intense, but at the same time, I also said to myself that, look, I want to only give what is most important that is going to move the needle for you guys. This course is particularly useful for people who are setting that business up or in the first few years of the business. And um, it, it has, you know, really quite a bit from, you know, product selection and creation to sales to logistics to, you know, a lot of other key issues or concerns and aspects that you need to now, you know, in order to have the successful tea business. Now, at the moment, the course is going for $117 and it's going to double in price next week. Today is 23rd of November, a few days, three days to be exact, to buy it for 117 And after that, it's going to go up in double price. And I have no doubt that, in fact, this is going to save you thousands, if not more, um, in the long run, to run the business without a lot of the pain that I have gone through. And I've burned thousands and thousands of dollars because I didn't know some of these things. And I... I just really want you to have this gift to do it easier because I have seen so many tea businesses fall through because they just cannot find that sweet spot and everything becomes so hard because they're doing things the wrong way around or if because they haven't got the support around them. So go and check it out. Um, Tea business fast start the link will be under this video in youtube of course it will be also on our site tease.com.au under the blog section um scroll right down to the very bottom of our site there is something called tea business tip click on that it's the business tea business blog section so you'll find it there too and uh, of course if you have already signed up for the overview it's time to plunge in take the course and really make your investment count before you go and buy any tea and build any site really enrich yourself so that you know with full confidence that where you're heading next so go and check out the course and i will catch you next time and ask me anything take care bye